The iCast show here in Orlando is about products, but it's also about legends in bass fishing. I'm here with Billy Chapman Jr., the most recent inductee into the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. I want to be the first one to congratulate you. Nobody deserves it anymore. Tell me a little bit about your history, particularly when you started off in the Amazon with the peacock bass. Well, Joe, in the wildest dreams, I'd be standing here as an inductee to the Fishing Hall of Fame. I mean, I just, it's incredible. You know, I, I dropped out of school early, got married early. I was a sophomore, actually, and started guiding. Went to Mexico, started guiding down there, and uh, ended up in the Amazons with the peacock bass. And uh, that was back in the 80s. Well, you put peacock bass on the map. Billy, how many videos did you do in, in the 80s with peacock bass. It was an amazing number. I've, I personally have 286 videos of every safari that I've ever taken any client on. I shot, I had a camera strapped to my shoulders. And uh, it was a big challenge to get people to go to the Amazons in the 80s, you know. Well, you were in a hammock there for a while, weren't yeah, you? There wasn't five-star accommodations. <laughs> now you gotta go in there and you gotta put things together. You gotta start off with, I actually took a medicine cabinet, mm -hmm. nailed it to a tree, strung my hammock, and got to work with the locals and carved out some beautiful properties and mm -hmm. then built some beautiful palapas. You know, the, the thatch roofs? Yes. We made our own cinder blocks. We basically made them by hand. You had to bring all the concrete, all your fuel and diesel in by barge. It was a challenge, wasn't it? It was a challenge, but man, it was some of the best years of my life. I mean, to be a pioneer of the peacock bass, which I just felt my vision for the peacock was going to be explosive, and sure enough, it was. I mean, the peacock bass, to me, is one of the most mightiest freshwater game fish in the world. Pound for pound, I mean, they're just awesome fish. So I built a couple lodges down there and uh, I started bringing in fishermen and outdoor life and feeling the stream and, and uh, it built up to be a pretty good business for me and then I built another lodge on the Orinoco River which was called Manaca mm -hmm. and then from there I came back to Mexico. But I, I won't stop you right there because you've, got, you've done a lot of things in Mexico. Tell me a little bit about the history of you and Lake El Salto and Angler's Inn. Well, Joe, when I did come back from the Amazons, I sold my lodges down there and I came back to Mexico at the perfect time. The Mexican government was building a new lake called Lake Al Salto. So uh, me and my father flew down Florida strain bass, which were the first Florida strain to ever come to Mexico on the west coast in the state of Sinaloa. And boy, did those Florida strain grow up. They I mean, took off, didn't they? That Lake Joe, for me, we opened it and uh, we stocked it in 1985. Mm -hmm. We opened it in 1990. And for 19 consecutive years, that lake has produced more 10 pound bass than any lake on the planet. And it's been very good to me. And uh, I started off with two rooms and then I got four rooms and then I got five rooms and I built it up to six rooms, 10 rooms, 12 rooms and now we have a resort on the lake from everything from pedicures to manicures to tracker boats. We were the first to bring tracker to Mexico and you know uh, it was the first brand of boat, the American boat ever to come to Mexico. We have the largest fleet of tracker boats and I got a wonderful staff and I, I don't, I can't take all the credit here because I mean a company takes more than one individual. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had the 120 employees standing next to me right now mm -hmm. because they made it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, the level of service that Angler's in, where we set the bar, I could not do it by myself. Right. And you know, Joe, you've been down there many times. My Sammies, my Tonys, my Chappies, my Jose's, my Giovanni's. They're the top guides in the world, aren't they? I mean, service is our world. Mm -hmm. and. If anything, uh, one thing I can promise with Anglers in, mm -hmm. we will be there for you when you land, mm -hmm. get you to the lodge, wake you up with your coffee, know how many sugars you need in it, and our, we got the coldest beer in town, mm -hmm. and it's all about service. You know, my vision on a fishing vacation, of course it's about catching a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. So the fishery is there because of the Florida strain. It's the only lake in Mexico that has 100% pure Florida strain bass. Right, right. And it's paid off. Over 19 years, 20,000 fishermen have come through my doors and our goal is to you know, fill your belly, have cold beer, catch fish, have the best guides, the best equipment, the best boats, and the best service that the planet has ever seen. And we're not done yet, Joe. You know, uh, 
basically the only thing I have in life and I know how to do is provide and be an outfitter. Mm -hmm. And to be in the Fishing Hall of Fame is a vision that I never dreamed of. You know, when I was in the Amazons, for instance, I just thought it'd be really cool to give you a banana split. Even though the bananas were floating in the ice cream. The guy went home and said, can you believe it? He I got a, a banana. friggin' banana split in the Amazon. So I learned that from the jungle and I brought it to Mexico. And uh, I mean, like I said, in my wildest dreams, I never thought I'd be in the fishing hall of fame. I've caught a lot of fish. I started catch and release in Mexico. That was a big deal. I mean, that was you know, a because, big deal. Because the, 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 the locals there, you actually had them embrace catch and release, which has been huge for Lake El Salto, hasn't it? It's been, the, it's, it's the main difference what made it lake it is Joe mm -hmm. because at the time you know I had charter planes coming in and customers flying home with ice chest of fish we always went fishing to bring home a ton of fish right and for me to just say there's no more fish leaving this lake I was taking a huge chance of losing hundreds and hundreds of customers mm -hmm. and believe it or not we didn't lose any customers our customers got with the program and and went with the catch and release and in return it's made it the number one bass lake in the world for the last 10 years. And uh, I mean, for a, to have a tournament, Joe, and first place is 122 pounds. I was right there for it. You yep, were there. I know, I know. 122 pounds weighing 20 fish, and second place, 120 pounds, That's documented fish, weighed fish, film fish, catch and release is what's making our fisheries better today. And then the, it was a big challenge with the co-ops, Joe. Mm -hmm. The co-ops, you, you have commercial fishing on every lake in Mexico. Sure, sure. So, I mean, if I had 12 children and I had to feed my family, right? and I caught a 10-pound bass, and Joe's going to tell me I got to throw that back, I don't think so, Joe. So mm -hmm. what we did is we got together with the local commercial fishermen. We said, Joe, every time, oh, let's say you're Jose. Mm -hmm. Jose, yeah. every time Jose, you see yeah. that gringo out there fishing, you're going to be making money with us. And it worked. You got them involved, didn't you? I got them involved. I made the co-op, the commercial fishermen, my partners. Mm -hmm. And when they see that gringo out there fishing, they're making money because when their nets come out of the water, they cash in on your money mm -hmm. throughout the summer that helps them get through the summer. So it was a long, drawn out process that took about 10 years to really convince them and put it all together and work as a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, it finally paid off, and now Al Salto, look, they're looking at Lake Al Salto, the Mexican government, to be the, uh, the model of all future lakes in Mexico. Well, that says a lot for you. I want to tell you something. You said never in your wildest dreams did you dream you'd be in the Fishing Hall of Fame. I can't think of a better inductee. And I think you've got one thing to ask these people out there. Go ahead and ask them. Have you caught your 10-pound yet? If you haven't, Give us a call at 1-800-GOT-A-FISH because we got a 10-pounder lined up for you.